Hi, Dana here. Welcome to Sew, Learn, Create. I'm glad you joined us today and welcome back if you've seen me before. If not, I hope you will subscribe to Sew, Learn, Create and help our channel grow. Today's project is something that you might think is for kids, but it's really fun for all ages. And it's a marble maze. It's a piece of fabric with a marble inside and a maze. They're great fidget projects. If you have kids or you're going on a car trip or something like that, you need something to kind of occupy them, you'd be amazed how calming this is. I like to do it when I finished them and just when I'm watching TV, I just kind of do my marble maze. So let's get started. For today's project, the marble maze, you'll just need a few simple supplies. So see how we've sewn some lines and our marble moves through our maze quite easily. You're going to need some fabric that is five inches by seven inches. And I'm using cotton fabric on the top. You could also use a cotton polyester blend. That would be fine. But on the back, you're going to want either felt or polar fleece. And the reason for that is so that when you are using your marble and doing your maze, the felt or polar fleece has a little bit more give to it, but it also adds a little more body to your project. Two pieces of cotton fabric and it would be fairly flimsy and wouldn't be as much fun. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your fabric and I'm going to use this blue fabric today and I'm going to use my white felt. So we're just going to place our felt down, put our fabric on top, right sides to right sides, and then we're going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to use my red and green clip uh, process to leave my opening, and I want to leave my opening on the bottom or long side of my project. So I put my green clip on, leave a little bit of space, usually about two fingers width is more than enough. And then when I stitch all the way around, starting at my green clip, stitching all the way, when I get back to my red clip, that reminds me to stop and I have this opening to turn my project. Then I'm going to clip it on all four sides, just so it doesn't shift on me when I go to the machine. Now we're ready to go to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're just going to stitch all the way around. We're going to start at our green clip, stitch all the way, and stop at our red clip, leaving that opening. I'm going to use the outside edge of my foot for as my guide, and that gives me a little bit larger than a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch a little bit at the front. And then when I get to these corners, I'm going to stop with my needle down lift and turn and that will make it nice and easy. Go to the next corner. I'm using a black thread today so it's a little bit easier to see the stitching but you could use one that coordinated with your fabric. These marble mazes are fun and easy to make. I made a bunch one year for my daughter's classroom and she gave them out at Valentine's Day. We did them with Valentine's fabric and her third and fourth graders really liked them. They're kind of addicting when you start playing with them. <clears throat> and when I get back to where my red clip was, I'm gonna do a little bit of a back stitch and leave that opening. Now, let's go back to the mat. Now that we've stitched all the way around our project, we just want to make sure, I like to flip it over and just double check and make sure everything's been caught and it's not too close to the edge, which I think we're good here. The next thing we want to do is we want to clip our corners. And when you want to clip our corners diagonally across, but not too close to that stitching, the reason we clip our corners is to reduce our bulk and make it easier to turn. So see, I've clipped across diagonally, but I'm really far from that stitching. And you want to do that on all four corners. So we'll just flip it around. All right. 
Now we're going to turn our project right side out. So I like to stick my finger or my thumb in, turn it around, get a good chunk, and just turn it right side out. You want to do this slowly so that because your felt will stretch, so you just want to make sure that you're not stretching your felt and also not pulling out your stitching. Then I'm going to use my chopstick. Chopstick works really well to turn corners and I'm just going to gently push those corners out. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Getting my corners all nice and crisp. All right. Then I'm going to press it, but I want to make sure that when I press it, I press it from the fabric side, not the felt side, because felt will melt. So you want to make sure that your setting on your iron is on a, a polyester blend setting or a lower setting, and you want to press it from the fabric side. The reason I'm going to press it is I want to make sure that I get this opening, that fabric turned in, so when I hand stitch that closed, it's nice and, and simple to do. So I'm just going to give it a quick press. And we look good. So the next thing, we're going to mark our lines to create our maze. So we're going to mark our lines and then we're going to insert our marble before we stitch our lines. So you're going to make four lines. Two on one side and two on the other, and that creates your maze. You just want to make sure that your lines are at least one inch apart or your marble won't fit through. And I found on this size that the four lines is, is plenty. If you try to do more lines, then they get too close together and your marble won't fit. So, and you're going to make your lines go more than halfway on each side. So I like to start and I make mine about an inch and a quarter apart and I just draw a little line and then I line up my ruler at the top and use that as my guide to make it straight and then I'm just gonna draw my line and it's about two and a half inches long and that's where I'm gonna stitch. And then I'm gonna come over to this side. Well, let's draw this one over here. These are about two, two and a half inches apart. So I'm going to come over here and put that at the two and a half inch. And I'm going to draw a line there. These don't have to be super accurate. The more even they are, they look a little nicer, but it's really not that big a deal. And then I'm going to do the same thing flip it to the other side and I'm going to start again at about an inch and a quarter. Draw my line and I want to make sure that those two lines are going to be at least one inches apart and I think we're good. Draw this line down about two and a half inches and see how they cross? That creates your maze. And then going to do these about two and a half. So I want to make sure that this line coming down is in between these two. Draw my guide. And down about two and a half inches. Now we've created our maze for our marble to go through. Now that we've got our lines drawn and we just want to double check and make sure that we've got at least an inch, which we do, in between each of them. And it's okay that this is a little wider, it doesn't really matter. So when we go to the machine, we're going to start on the edge and we're going to stitch to the center of each of our lines. And you just want to make sure that your lines are overlapped because that helps create the maze. So this one is longer, this one is longer, and then we're ready to stitch them. So let's go to the machine. Now we're ready to stitch our, our lines to create our maze. We want to start on the outside edge of each of our line, stitch to the center. Then we're going to turn and go back across that same stitching line. You want to reinforce these stitching 
because this is where all your stress will be when your marble is going through your maze. So we're gonna start right here at our edge. We're gonna stitch down our line. And then we're just gonna lift with our needle down in our fabric. We're gonna turn and we're just gonna stitch right back down that same line. And if you get off just a little bit, don't worry about it. You're just reinforcing that. And I'm gonna back stitch at the edge, but I'm gonna leave a long thread tail because when I finish, I wanna go and tie a knot on these stitching lines to make sure they don't come undone. Even though I've back stitched, I wanna double reinforce that. So I'm gonna leave a long thread tail on both sides. So I'll show you one more. Get my threads in the right place. So remember, we're gonna start from the outside edge. We're gonna stitch straight down, go back and stitch it again. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit at that beginning. Stitch down. When I get to the end, my needle is down in my fabric. Lift my presser foot, turn, and I'm going right back down that same stitching line. back stitch again and then I'm going to leave a long thread tail so I can tie them off. I'm going to finish these other two lines and I'll meet you back at the mat. Now we've stitched our lines and we've left our long tails. The reason we left our tails is I want to tie off each of these on the ends so I can make sure that they are really secure. So I'm going to take two on one side, two threads on the other, and I'm just gonna tie a knot. Making sure that I left a long enough tail for my fingers to do this. So I'm gonna tie that. And I like to do a double knot, that way I know it's nice and secure. And I'm gonna clip my threads, making sure I don't clip my knot, because I've done that in the past. So now we've got all of our stitching lines done and now we're ready to add our marble. So we're gonna find our opening and you can use any kind of marble. Um, you can get a big pack at Dollar Tree, Walmart. It doesn't really matter. You just wanna make sure that they're the normal size marble or the smaller ones, not the big giant ones that you used when you played the game of marbles because those won't fit through the maze. So you just wanna take your marble, insert it in your opening and just kind of push it out of the way. Then we're gonna close our opening by hand. So I'm gonna use a yellow thread so you can see it. And you're gonna close your opening, starting by tying your knot on your needle. And I like to do a double knot because felt or polar fleece is a little more loose weave of fabric, so if you don't tie a big enough knot, it will pull through. Then we're gonna start by inserting our needle on the inside of our opening, so our knot doesn't show. We're gonna pull it all the way down. Then you're gonna take your thread, gonna lay it across the top, and then you're gonna go through both your, at your fabric and your felt and pull that thread across. So again, you're going to lay it across the top. Then coming from the front, you're going to just poke it through both your fabric and your felt and then pull it. And what that does is you're doing what they call a whip stitch. You're just going to stitch all the way across and close that opening. And once you do that, then your project is done. I'm just going to Finish that in a minute. So now our marble maze is done and we can just push our marble through our maze. And it looks really cute. And if you use a coordinating uh, stitching, then you won't see your stitching lines and it, it turns out really nice. You could also, if you wanted one of these smaller, you could make it cut your fabric size down and then do your stitching this way and then you have a smaller one that would fit in your pocket um, really well. 
So I hope you like today's project, our marble maze. And remember, you can make them in any size. These are a five by seven and you, they're a little bit bigger, but you could make them a half size and just have one maze that they go through. So if you like today's project, be sure you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.